Hello everyone, thank you for watching this video in which I will do some clarifications and answer some questions that are related to the unit test video. Well, let's read the questions and see if there is a good answer for each of these questions. Very good questions, by the way. Really, really good and really nice to see that you are really interested in this subject because it's a very, very good subject and really important in software development. So unit testing is, is something that you really have to know and really have to apply in your applications. So what would be the approach when you unit test a method that has in its body another call to another method of the same class? And then we have also how can you mock static methods? And if is reflection a good approach when writing unit tests? Well, reflection is actually used by any kind of um, a functionality that manipulate bytecode that is Spring itself and its Mokito for doing um, mocks and uh, all that um, related functionality. So uh, to is reflection a good approach when writing unit tests? If you refer to just using directly reflection, I, no, I would say using directly reflection is not a good approach when writing unit tests. Uh, but uh, anyway, the frameworks that you are using are, are, are actually, they are using behind the reflection. So you are practically using reflection all the time when using Spring or uh, the related functionality and even when writing unit tests. But for your first two questions, then there is only one answer that I have for you and the answer is PowerMock. Well, you can use PowerMock to uh, do tests on private methods, to mock um, methods when they are coming from the same class and even to mock static methods. But you know, this is not really recommended. So, so I will show you the technical possibility to do that. I will show you this is possible, but then I will also tell you that you shouldn't do that in your application. And that's for a reason. And the reason is, if you get into one of these situations, it actually doesn't mean that you don't have to test your code. It means that your code is written incorrectly in terms of solid principles. So most probably, if you got into a situation in which you have to mock a static method, then think about the static method. And the question would be, is it really that method, is it needed to be static? I mean, you... At the moment you define a method static, you are not writing it object oriented anymore. And you will also have some other problems related to that method. So is that method really need to be static? Of course, I know in practical, in practical situations, there are cases in which you use static methods from different libraries that are not yours. And of course, in that case, maybe you would need for some reason to mock a static method, that's an exception of the rule. But if it is your code, think about of the static method twice before making it static. It might be that you would better write it a non-static as a behavior of an object and that will make uh, life easier for you. Uh, also related to the fact that you would need to mock a method from the same class, it's the same thing actually. If you call a method from the same class, then this could mean that your class have more than one responsibility so you don't actually respect the single responsibility principle. If the method that you are calling is private, then you have uh, the possibility of course of, uh, of having a private behavior. You have again to think twice if the private behavior is part of the same responsibility as the class. But if it is a private behavior, then usually we don't test this behavior directly. And again, using PowerMock, for example, you would be able to actually test the private method and even to mock the private method, but you definitely don't need to uh, know about um, private behavior. And when I say no, it's like you imagine that it's private and you act upon it when testing like you don't even know that method exists. So if you have the situation in which you have a private method, you theoretically don't know the method exists. That, that's why it is private. It's somehow known only by the class. So then you test the behavior and the expectations, but you don't know about that method. And if something looks fishy, 
then again check if that method really has to be private in the same class and if it's not like part of another responsibility and then you have to take it out on another class and act as we have discussed in the main video regarding unit tests usually in a well-written code you will get uh, into most of the situations in which you will get are those that i, I have presented in the first um, uh, main video of uh, unit tests so be very careful when you get into this kind of situations it might be that it's not a unit test problem it might be that's a code problem a code design problem so take uh, a second look on your code and see if you have written your code according to the solid principles and if it is really a code a testable code that way now i'm also going to show you uh, the technical approach, the technical possibility of uh, uh, testing private methods and even mocking uh, private and static methods. As I've told you, you can use PowerMock for that. So in order to use PowerMock, by the way, I have used actually the same, uh, the same um, uh, project here as in um, the, the main video. And I have only added uh, the dependencies for PowerMock, which are two dependencies here. I have used the latest version. And these are the dependencies that I have uh, added beside uh, what you have seen in my main video. And then I have created uh, two methods in the product service class. One that is a private method that I want to test. Of course, I don't call it here from anywhere. I just try to test this method uh, to show you this is possible. And then I have also a static method here. And you, as you can see, I have called the static method from the private method. And this way I will actually need to mock the static method. So um, it's somehow, uh, I believe, related to everything that you have asked in your questions. So you, we have a private method, we have a static method, and we even have a static method called from the private method in the same class. So this way we cover, I guess, all, all, the, um, uh, uh, all the questions. Uh, and e to do that, I have created another test class. And this test class actually has to use PowerMock. So I, I run with, with the, the PowerMock runner, as you can see here. And because I want to test this class and to be able to mock the static methods, uh, I use this prepare for test annotation here. And then uh, when I do a before here, so before each test, I make sure that I, I set up um, the product service for uh, mock stat mocking static methods, which you can do by calling this mock static method from the power mockito class and provide the class that you want to, pr to prepare as a parameter. And then the test itself is actually testing the private method. And again, you will see the exactly same structure of the test that I have presented in the main video, where you have an assumption, you call the method, and then you have some expectations. So always in a test, doesn't matter what you are testing, you have the assumption, the call of the method, and then the expectation. So I have, I have a product service instance, and then I, I have the assumption which tells me when the static method is called, that will return seven. And then I, I invoke the method, but of course I can't invoke the method directly because it is private. So I have to invoke it by this invoke method in the white box class, which is actually using reflection behind to call my private method. It, it sets it, is that it as accessible and then calls the method. And then I get the result here. It's just an utility, it's just easier to make it like this than writing your own reflection code, of course. So I, I recommend you, if you really want to do that, you just, uh, it's just easier to use some, some code that uh, uh, templates uh, your um, reflection code and uh, makes it a little bit easier to read. So you can see here, I white box the, uh, and invoke the method, the private method um, uh, from the product service instance, and then I get the result. And then I set my expectation that the result should be seven because here the static method was mocked to return seven. And I, I have explicitly used seven here that is a different value than the one you have seen here to see that indeed the method was mocked. Otherwise, if it wasn't mocked, it would return five. So 
depending what you would like to do if you don't mock this method it will of course be called directly and then it would return five but in my case because i have mocked the method that will return seven so that the private method itself when called will also return seven so this uh, this test now should run correctly because my expectation matches the um, assumptions so uh, you see the test is now running correctly and that is because indeed the private method is returning 7 when the static method also returns 7. You can do things like this, it's not natural again. Make sure that you really need, from my point of view and from my experience, the need of power mock in your code base is... Um, uh, it might tell you something about your code, it might tell you that, that something is wrong with your um, code. You usually should avoid situations in which you need to mock private methods uh, or static methods or, or test private methods. And that's related to the way the code is written such that it uh, allows it to be testable without this kind of approach and without using the reflection. I hope this answers your questions. If uh, you still have um, uh, things that are unclear, please let me know and I will clarify them separately. And uh, stay tuned for next videos. Thank you very much for the questions. Really good, really good questions.